Hi, my name is Jennifer and welcome back to my channel, the CRPS Network. Today I'm going to be talking about spinal cord stimulators and getting them for CRPS. So first of all, what is a spinal cord stimulator? A spinal cord stimulator is a device that is implanted usually in the lower black back and it sends a mild electric current through your spinal cord. Uh, this stimulates the nerves and it masks the pain signals that are sent from the brain to the area that you're having in pain. Now, this does not eliminate pain. It only masks the signals that are being sent. This usually, you'll experience a mild electric current and sort of a tingling sensation. And sometimes this can be bothersome for some, uh, so they may not be able to tolerate having something like that. Um, others are able to get some relief with the spinal cord stimulator. Okay, there's many different spinal cord stimulators, but most of them have some same properties to them. Most of them have a pulse generator, and this comes with a battery, and that is what's creating the electric pulses that are being sent. Now, they also all have some lead wires. They vary, some may have um, anywhere from eight to 32 lead wires. And this is what attaches to the spinal cord and delivers the electric pulses. And the third component that they all have is a handheld remote. And this can be used to turn on and off the device and can also usually adjust the intensity that is felt through the spinal cord stimulator. Okay, most of them um, are self-charging and the self-charging ones last anywhere from eight to 10 years. Some do not charge on their own and those need to be replaced every two to five years. Okay, so let's talk about a couple studies that were done with the spinal cord stimulator and uh, using them with people that have CRPS. There was a study done, and I know this was a while ago, in 1997 by the International Study for Pain, and they evaluated 36 patients that had CRPS and tried the spinal cord stimulator. They checked back with these patients a six months a, and a year, even a couple years after they had had the spinal cord stimulator implanted and questioned them about their pain levels. Now, 42 to 47% of the people did get relief from the spinal cord stimulator, just depending on a lower or upper limb. And then, 64% of the people in the study did have complications or adverse effects from the spinal cord stimulator. So please be aware there are a lot of risks that are involved, um, which I'll go over in a minute, that uh, are involved with the spinal cord stimulator that you should be taking into consideration before you consider getting one. Okay. Um, also, there was a, another study that was done. This was a kind of a wide um, spread study that was done that determined it, the spinal cord stimulator did reduce pain levels. However, it did not improve function. And by function, I mean the ability to um, carry out your normal day-to-day -day activities on a regular basis. So, Anyways, also this study showed that after three years, most of the patients did not get relief from their spinal cord stimulator anymore. Okay, so let's talk about some of the risk involved with getting a spinal cord stimulator. We know that uh, surgery can pose a risk for people with CRPS to have spreading of the CRPS. So 
perhaps you could have spreading of pain to the area of the surgical site or even other areas. But uh, anytime you have surgery, this is a risk and spinal cord stimulators do involve surgeries. In fact, they may involve multiple surgeries since they do need to be replaced um, depending on if you have a chargeable or non-chargeable time. It could be anywhere from two to 10 years that they need to be replaced. So you'll have most likely multiple surgeries um, involve some um, do a test prior to having it installed. Um, we'll do kind of a test round to see if you're getting relief before they do go through the, with the full surgery and plant the device. Um, but surgery is definitely uh, something to be concerned about in involving this uh, treatment. Also some other uh, risks that are involved is the risk of infection. I actually um, personally know somebody with CRPS that was uh, allergic to the battery in her device. It, her The battery was made of nickel. She was allergic to it and ended up having multiple infections. She had to have the device taken out, but had a lot of complications that uh, involve surgeries and um, she really regrets getting it anyways. That is definitely a risk of infection, also scar tissue. Um, another risk, risk is that the electrodes could break that attach, the lead wires could break, so they may have to go in to repair those. Also, you may have hardware malfunction. So just sometimes, uh, you know, electronics or technology does break. So you have the chance that that may happen. Also, the risk of leaking spinal cord fluid, fluid from your spinal cord. Uh, that is a risk. And uh, bladder problems have been reported with people with uh, spinal cord stimulators as well. So those are some of the risks to take into consideration. Um, also, it is not a, a cheap procedure, although insurance may cover it, it is a pretty pricey um, procedure to do. Um, anyway, so make sure to do your due diligence and do your own research. I'm sure there's other studies other than the ones that I have referred to um, out there on this. So make sure to do your research before considering this option, mostly because there are so many risks that are involved um, with this procedure. So anyways, if you have had a spinal cord stimulator, make sure to leave a comment below and let us know how you're doing with it and if it has helped you with pain and function, if you've had any complications with it, make sure to let us know. And coming up soon, I'm going to be doing another video on the DRG, which is kind of a newer version of the spinal cord stimulator. DRG stands for dorsal root ganglion stimulator. And um, this is supposed to be kind of a more new and improved version. So I'm going to dive into that as well coming up in the week soon. So make sure to watch out for that video. I'll do a little comparison between the two. All right. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. I make new videos every week. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified of when I make the next one. Till next time, take care.